This is Dr. Susan Thrall. I'm now going to demonstrate how to create a calculated field in the query design grid. Before you, you see my Microsoft Access query grid screen up. It's on the design screen. And I've opened two tables, the contract table and the invoice table. So I've added those to my design screen. Now I want to take fields from both of the tables and put them onto my grid. So I'm going to take the contract number. I'm going to take the contract amount. Those are from the contract table. From the invoice table, I'm going to take invoice item, invoice paid, and invoice amount. So you can see those five fields are added to my query grid. Now, when I run the query, I see those five fields and the invoice paid column has a checkbox that shows whether the customer has paid their invoice, a check indicating they have, no check meaning they have not paid their invoice. Now I'm just interested in the ones that have not paid their invoice because I'm going to charge them a late penalty fee and I certainly don't want to do that to my customers that have paid. So I'm going to do a query so all I see are the ones that have not paid. So I go back to the design screen and whether or not they've paid it refers to the invoice paid field in the invoice paid column and what I put in the criteria box is either a yes or a no. If you recall, invoice paid was set up as a yes no type. So when you're working with a yes no type field in the criteria box, the only possible things you can put in are a yes, so you can see those people who have paid their invoices, or a no, and you can see those people who haven't paid their invoices. Now I'm interested in the ones who haven't paid their invoices. So I'm going to type a no in the criteria box. I'm going to run the query. And as you can see, all these boxes here indicating whether they paid or not are empty. So my query worked. I ended up with only those people that haven't paid. Now I'm going to save this because I want to use this particular query to do my calculated query. So I'm going to click the Save button. And up comes the save as box with the dummy name query one and we're going to call it unpaid invoices with late fees. I'm just going to call it unpaid invoices so I don't have to do so much typing. So unpaid invoices. Click OK. And if you notice that's the title on the tab right now, unpaid invoices. Now going back to design view I decide not to show that invoice paid column. Once again, let me run it. Right now, all you're seeing is a column of blank boxes indicating they haven't paid. And that doesn't give me much uh, information with that being there. I already know they haven't paid that because that was the query I did. So I go back to Design View and I decide to turn off the Show button. Now remember, this Show button, all it means is show it in design uh, when I run it in Datasheet View. It does not mean those are the ones who ha have or have not paid. By typing in no in the criteria box, those indicate the ones who have not paid. So once again, when I run that query, I just don't have that column showing. But these are the people, these are the contracts that have not paid me. And I'm going to save it again. And then go back to design view. Now here comes the calculated field part. What I want to add is a calculated field that's going to take their invoice amount and add a 3% penalty to it. So I'm going to have a new field in my grid called late fee. Now notice on the tables up here there's no field called late fee but I can calculate that. In the book they show you how to do this using the builder button up here. I generally like to just type it in if it's a very simple calculation. So I'm going to show you this method. All right, when you're doing a calculated field, the first thing you do is you click in the very top field box in an empty column. So this is the field box. I've clicked in an empty column. I'm going to give it a new name. So if I drop down the arrow, these are all the names up here. This is a totally new field. 
So I'm not using the drop down. I'm giving it a new name and I'm going to call it late fee. After you give it a name, you type in a colon. And since late fee is on neither of these tables, you have to type in the calculation that you want the computer to do to calculate that late fee. Now the late fee is going to be the invoice amount times 3%. So I'm going to type in invoice amount times 3%. Now when I do a calculated field, any field names that are already there that I'm going to use in my calculation, I type in in square brackets. So notice I'm going to type in a square bracket, invoice amount, capitals or smalls don't matter, but it has to be spaced exactly as the name is. So over here and up here, invoice amount has one space between the two words. So I have to give one space here also. Amount is not spelled out, it's spelled AMT. I have to match that exactly. So I close my square brackets and then I'm going to say times 0 0.03. Mathematical signs like times or plus or minus or divided by never go in square brackets and neither do numbers. So I'm going to have my time sign, my asterisk, not in square brackets, my 0 0.03, which is a number, not in square brackets. That's all there is to it. Now I run the query check if it worked and aha uh -huh, indeed it did. There's the late fee so my first contract has a late three fee of $300 tagged on to it and so on. Now the only thing I want to do since this has worked correctly is to change these numbers in the column so they look a little better. I'm going to format them. So I go back to design view. Now the easiest way to format them, notice where your cursor is, it's still blinking in the line where you typed your formula. That's where you want to keep it and this is extremely important. If you move that cursor, when you try to drop down the properties sheet, you'll get the wrong one. And then you'll have to uh, go through, jump through several hoops to get the correct one. So my cursor is still on the line where I typed in my formula. I go up to the ribbon and on the show hide group there's property sheet click that you could also right click the formula and bring up this property sheet and you want to set two things always two things you want to set the format and you want to set the decimal places don't do one without the other or it won't work so I'm going to set the format and since this is money I'm going to choose from the drop down currency and decimal places from the drop down I can set it at zero because we oftentimes have zero with money or two because we in the United States we have two decimal places so I will choose two so notice I set both format and decimal places I run the query and now my late fees look nicely formatted and at this point I can save it